Hey everyone, Johnny here. Welcome to the third part of our hair braid tutorial. In the first video, we looked at a function that allowed us to create the braid shape. In the second video, we saw how we could take each strand of that braid and multiply it a bunch of times. However, this has caused us to create some braids that are pretty homogeneous all the way through, and we need a bit more artistic control to make them do what we want them to do. So let's jump into it. Like before, I'm going to add an object to use as our scalp. I'll just use an icosphere with a couple of subdivisions. With it selected, I'll hit Shift A, add curve, empty hair. I'll go into sculpt mode, hair add mode, and add a single hair. Working off our previous video's work, I'm going to add a geometry nodes modifier and set it to braid. I'll give it a few settings. Now we're going to want to be able to vary our braid along the length of the braid. And at this point, I don't want to be messing with my braid node because it's working fine how it is. So instead, I'm going to replace this braid node with another new node. First, I'll hit the X button on this modifier to remove the braid node. And I'll click New. From this new group, I'll go to Add, Group, Braid. And I'll dial up my settings again. And then I'll drag from my group input over to my controls. At this point, I've pretty much replicated my braid node on my modifier stack. However, I now have control over these channels before it gets to my braid. I'm gonna rename this node Braid Control. I'll spread these out a little bit. I'm gonna shift right click and drag through these lines here and here, select them and drag them all down like this. There, now I've gotten these out of the way for the moment. Whenever we want to apply something along the length of a curve, the spline parameter node is what we want to go to. So I'll go ahead and add that under curve spline parameter. And now this will give us a value starting at zero and going to one. If I take my a value here and I multiply it by the factor, and plug that into my A value in my braid, you'll see that at the root, my braid is very small and gets larger as it goes to the tip. Of course, this is backwards from what we actually want. So we need to change this factor and flip it around. We could do an exact flip by putting in a subtract node and subtracting the factor from one. However, I wanna have a little more artistic control than that. So to do that, I'm gonna add a utility float curve node. This is gonna give me the ability to draw the mapping between the factor and the output. Instead of going from zero to one, I want it to go from one to zero. So all I need to do is bring the zero up to one and the one down to zero. Already, this is a much more natural looking shape. However, it might be a little too perfect, so we can change the arc of this curve. If we pull it down, it'll get smaller faster and then even out. Or we could go this direction and it would stay thicker longer and then thin out right at the end. We'll put it somewhere around there. Now this takes care of the reduction on this axis, but if I look from the top, you see that it stays the same. So that's controlled by the B value. To adjust that one, We'll simply duplicate these nodes, attach the B value, and attach the B value here. Now I have individual control over the height and the width of my braid. Of course, if I wanted these to always be the same, I could simply pipe the A value through one float curve and then split it into both the A and the B, and then remove B totally from my modifier stack. But this gives me the most control. The other value here that we can adjust is the frequency. Let's duplicate our nodes one more time. Bring the frequency down here. 
and then plug that into our node as well. This one can be a little trickier, but even still, you can get some interesting effects. Like here, having it being a tighter braid at the top and then smoothing out towards the bottom. Now that we have this in place, we want to do the same thing with our multiply hairs node. Instead of attaching it directly to my modifier stack, I'm going to add a new geometry nodes modifier and create a new node tree from there. I'm going to call this one hair control. To this node, I'll add my group multiply hairs node and give it some more reasonable settings. You can see here now why we need to adjust this. Because here, while it's a good size at the tip, it's not a good size at the root. So we're going to do the exact same thing with the spread and the frizz that we did with the A, B, and frequency settings on our braid. First I'll connect the amount out to my modifier stack. Then I'll bring over the spread, multiply it, add my spline parameter, add that to the value, and then add my float curve node. I'll turn up my spread, and like before, we need to change the ends. So I'll ramp up the root side and drop the tip side. And as before, we have some artistic control as well. Lastly, we'll do the same thing with the Frizz node. And here we could dial up extra randomness at the, the root and have it get smoother as it goes out. Or if we wanted the end of the braid to frizz out a bit, we could simply bring this up right at the end. Adding these five curves to your nodes will give you quite a bit of artistic control over the braids themselves. So that's the end of this one. I hope you're continuing to learn something and I hope you're sticking with it. And as always, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.